Hey guys, this is Alex. And this is Drew. And today on the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast, we're going to be checking out some really unique and quirky tech that has been in Marvel and DC Comics over the years. Let's go. Yeah. What's up, Drew? Not much. As you can see, we are not in the same room today. Scheduling got a little weird, so we're trying this. Not, I mean, we're used to doing the audio remotely. Right. This will be the first real time to do video remotely, so... Bear with us. There might be some weirdness, but we're just trying to test this out in case we need to do it again in the future. But I definitely prefer being in the room with you. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely easier. We just, I mean, yeah. you'll never see this, but we started the podcast like four times already and had to stop yeah. and start and restart. There's uh, some unique challenges to recording remotely and lining up everything Yeah, to make sure it all works. Um, so... We're going to jump right into it today because we have a lot of cool things to cover. Drew had an idea um, before we jump into our next comic book series to actually take a look at some of the unique comic book technology, vehicles, suits, gadgets, Mm -hmm. gizmos, whatever you want to call it, just that has shown up throughout, you know, 80, 90 plus years of comics. And obviously there is so much to this that we're going to leave out more than we could ever include. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the the original idea was, I was just texting, texting Alex saying, hey, what if we just did a show where we talked about our, our favorite Batmobile? And then we were just like, okay, what if we expanded it a little bit? So um, for this, um, I kind of looked into some cool and weird um, DC-based tech and Alex looked on more on the Marvel side. Some of it's transportation, some of it's uh, other things. And, you know, just for the record, I didn't go into any bat gadgets at all. The only things I've been thinking about have been specific transportation. So right. we so could this have a is... whole episode about <laughs> his utility belt, I'm sure. And we probably will. <laughs> yeah. Today we're going to talk about Batman's belt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is by no means a comprehensive list. There's just too much to go over. But some of the stuff that stuck out to us or that we've found cool or intriguing or even Mm -hmm. weird throughout the years, because there's definitely some stuff that I'm like, that didn't age well. Um, But hey, it's comics, and uh, something may seem a little uh, cheesy Mm -hmm. at this point in time was the hippest, hottest thing back in the 50s or 60s. You know, so cool. So we're going to jump right in. Drew, I'm going to let you... Tell me some of the first stuff you got, and then we'll get into some of the stuff I did, and we'll just go from there. So since the original idea was, what's your favorite Batmobile? I still want to ask that question. Um, Yeah. So, and there are more than I'm going to mention right now. But since we are, since this is a visual Mm -hmm. uh, podcast now as well, we thought that this would be great so that we can toss some graphics of what these look like. Because I definitely have a favorite and then an almost favorite. Yeah. So... I'm just going to line out the ones. I'm going to say it just long enough for, and maybe say a blurb about it. Mm -hmm. And you can see it on the screen. And then just, and then afterwards we'll talk about them as a whole maybe. Let me ask you, how long did it take you to decide this, this question? Like this answer for you? Oh, it was like instantaneous. Yeah, I was pretty quick. And I think my answer might even be like slightly controversial. Mm, Okay. Um, I mean, as controversial as a question like this can, can get. But I, well, just just like I I normally am, I don't have like a one answer uh-huh. answer. I've got contingency answers, so you know. So let's we're just gonna kind of name a few of them off, and like I said, like or like Alex said, this is by no means an exhaustive list. I'm gonna leave some off, and if we don't mention your favorite uh, Batmobile, leave it in the comments or uh, shoot us a tweet a tweeter tweeter shoot us a tweeter. <laughs> uh, Shoot us a message on Twitter or something, you know. Yeah. Let us know what your favorite one is because I am by no means a Batman expert. Um, I mean, my middle name's not Wayne, so. <laughs> right, right. Uh, speaking so I'm just of, name off the ones that I, I I dig. Speaking of, if you mm-hmm. feel so inclined to shoot us a tweet, Drew, where can they tweet at us? Yeah, you can find us at Two Man Comic Book with the number two on Instagram and Facebook. Two Man Comic Book Club, still with the number two, or our blog where we post these, uh, two man comic book club dot blogspot dot com. 
or just leave it down in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Yep. That's the first time I think I've ever said that. Well, it's only the third time we've made one of these, so (laughs) it makes sense. Cool. So do you want to go first? Yeah. So I'm just going to start kind of chronologically. I might be out of order on some of these. Mm Mm-hmm. But the first Batmobile that I think of is the one from the, the old TV show with Adam West and whatnot that, you know, that black with red trim convertible yeah. type thing. So I'm looking that at a one. picture right now for Batman 1966. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a cool car, like a car that I would happily drive around. I mean, it's pretty iconic. It is definitely yeah. not, un, it's not like any of the others that are on this no, list. No, it's it's way different. Then uh, just jumping ahead to the, you know, the 89, 90-ish uh, Tim Burton Batman movies with mm-hmm. uh, Michael Keaton. Just that one, to me, is iconic. Yeah, like, that one. Just, everything about it. That one goes back to my childhood for sure. Like, I, yeah, I think yeah. about the Tim Burton, the quirkiness of that film mm-hmm. in general. Like, it leaked into the design of things like that as well. So it's... Yeah. 10-year-old Alex was hyped on that. Yeah. And... I, mean, I don't know if this is technically the next one chronologically, but I'll kind of sidestep over to the one from the animated series mm-hmm. that I think is kind of just, it's it's very similar in a lot of ways to the Tim Burton one. Right. Just yeah. in its lines, kind of, but mm-hmm. a lot more blocky. Right. Pretty yeah. cool. I like I like that one a lot, actually. It's up there for me. And then this one, um, I remember... Whenever I was growing up, there was a chance to win the Batman Forever uh, Batmobile. One of them through like a Taco Bell thing or something I, like that. I was about to say, I think it was Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah. I remember and this. I tried so hard. I mean, how cool would it be to be a teenager <laughs> driving around in a Batmobile? That's yeah. a, there's a reason that in the in the movie series, Dick Grayson, you know, jumps in because he and he Just goes for a short ride. With it gives it hydraulics. Mm-hmm. He's driving it around. Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. It, so there's that one, you know. Yeah, which is which is which a is cool a really one. crazy one, but it's cool. Yeah, um, and then we go to, I believe the next one should be the Batman Begins, right? The mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan yeah. one. I don't which know which when it first came out, I despised, mm-hmm. but it grew on me. Right. I, I I see how it is how how powerful it is as like a a utilitarian Batmobile. Right. Right. It also, um, I think very close to that time, the Arkham Asylum games were starting to come out, okay. maybe just shortly after a couple of years or so. Um, I might, if I think of it, throw one of those images up there right now because they, yeah. in my mind, they kind of took some influence from that a little bit while still also holding one. on to the homage uh, from the older ones that were in yeah. the Tim Burton and the Batman Forever ones as well. And then um, the next one, which whenever I was looking through pictures of Batmobiles, I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah, that was one. But I don't remember very much because as a bad, just a a very embarrassingly inadequate DC Comics fan sometimes, I've only seen Justice League or um, Superman versus Batman or Batman versus Superman. I can't remember which order it's in. Mm -hmm. I've only seen either of those movies one time. Right. So the amount of screen time that that bat that Ben Affleck's Batmobile gets, I didn't get to. I didn't spend much time with it. So mm-hmm. I saw it and I was like, "Oh yeah, he 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 had to have a Batmobile." Right. So and then, oh no, you go ahead. Is that is that all of them, or are there more? I was going to mention the one from the Batman trailer. Ah yes, yeah, so you're saw. we're cutting edge here. Yeah. Yeah, and. And that one's pretty sweet. I mean, mm-hmm. just like looking at it, it that one to me looks more like, oh yeah, I think I'm going to be a Batman. Yeah, I want to, I want to make a Batmobile. Yeah, it looks pretty just raw. Take a, for a sure. muscle car and make it a little bit cooler, you mm-hmm. know. So that one's pretty. I'm excited to see that one actually yeah. on the screen. Yeah, I can't vote for that one, but I do feel like I'm going to like it a lot, yeah, um, just because I don't know enough about it yet. I got to see it in action. So. Since it was my initial thought to ask the question, I'm going to ask it first. Mm-hmm. Alex, what's your favorite Batmobile? My oh, Alex Wayne Miller. That's right. As in Bruce Wayne, because you are Batman. That is correct. Which would be Alex Wayne Miller, Bruce Wayne's Batmobile? My favorite Batmobile, and I thought this immediately whenever you asked the question on the phone a couple of days ago, 
uh, and what is, I still believe, and you kind of hit on this being a possibly controversial answer, is the Batmobile from the Dark Knight trilogy of Christopher Nolan. The uh, the Tumblr, as they called it, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In uh, in those series. It is so different than the other Batmobiles. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but in my mind, I think I've spoke to this a little bit when just talking about superhero films in general. In my mind, if somebody was really going to have a go at this, um, yeah. they would build something like that. I think like something that was because if you think about the other Batmobiles, I mean, while they never portray this necessarily in a real world, I don't think they would quite get around as easy as the Tumblr would in like a variety of different landscapes and stuff. And this one is just awesome. It had the cool functionality of the the bike that shoots off on one side Mm -hmm. of it, Mm -hmm. like that he uses in a is that Dark Knight Rises? I can't remember. I think that yeah. So it's yeah, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, I think, are the three films. Um, he uses that one, and it has, like, the wheels that, like, mm-hmm. spin off their axis, like, yeah. to make him do, like, extremely sharp turns or just a flat 180. It was just so cool, and uh, in my mind, for some reason, that was just, like, the most realistic, if it were going to happen, Batman, uh, Batmobile that yeah. they could have come up. Yeah. Yeah, those. whenever that first came out, I saw it. I was like, "That's not a Batmobile." A but lot of yeah, people like you watch it, hate it, <laughs> and you spend time with it. You're like, "Yeah, for that exact reason, I get it." Around mm-hmm. that same time, I remember, like, I was in college and I was working at McAllister's Deli, and there were some other comic book fans that worked there with me. And for whatever reason, one of them was talking about, "Yeah, I saw this article the other day talking about what it would actually cost to be Batman right now." <laughs> and to get the closest to the Batmobile type thing, it would be basically a street, a Hummer that you go through and, you know, do your modifications to. And I was just like, from that uh, jumping off point, I was like, I get it. Yeah, that's where the Tumblr comes from. It's more of a Hummer. Right. It's like a, a sleek jet car. It's like a military vehicle. Yeah. And it exactly. kind of feels like that because we have uh, Lucius Fox in those in the trilogy kind of designing things from like a militaristic standpoint too. Like, yeah. which again, if somebody were going to do it also feels like the more legit way that that would actually happen. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, that one was mostly an easy decision for me. I mm-hmm. thought about being, uh, being super cool and picking the one from the animated series, because I always just remember mm-hmm. thinking that one looks really cool for a cartoon yeah. car. Just the slick. It's super long. Is that kind of like Art Deco? Is that what that I think so. came from? Yeah. I don't remember, but yeah. Um, I'm looking at it right now. It's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like almost obnoxiously long for a vehicle <laughs> yeah. link. Yeah. But it works for some reason. Like, like, that, like that limousine from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Right. You ever saw that? Yep. It's like, That's that, a great example. I'm going to yeah. throw that up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, if you kind of did like a... It's like a crash course collision thing, like of what mm. those two things kind of look like. But that one's up there for me. I really do dig the design of that. Yeah. So if I had to go talk about my pick, which now that you mention the the utilitarian aspect of the tumbler, it makes me kind of second guess my <laughs> uh, my choice. But I'm not going to doesn't pick have another to. one. Um, but yeah, I think my favorite's gonna be like until. I see something that just like not only takes my my hearts from a style point, but also a functionality point is always going to be Michael Keaton's Batmobile. Yeah. And yeah. then I think about it from trying to see that one cut through. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> when he's making those sharp turns, he uses his uh, grappling hooks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he can, he maybe he can get maybe creative and not, make it happen. Yeah, he he's figured out ways to get around the the crowded streets of Gotham, right? And doesn't need the Tumblr aspects anymore. But is it is it in Batman Returns that he is? It, it's either that one, or I think, or Batman Forever, where one of the Batmobiles shoots up and drives up a wall. I, I'm pretty sure that was the original Batman movie. Yeah, either that or Batman Returns. Though actually. I can see both of them doing it. I don't remember. Yeah, I can't either. I would assume, let's just assume that he has that in all of his uh, yeah. Batmobiles. But we saw it in one. I mean, I haven't seen the Tumblr drive up a building. Yeah. But 
<clears throat> you brought up, you know how I said that I have contingency answers. Yeah. Of course. My second one, even though the movies I didn't love so much, uh-huh. it came at that point of my life where the Batman Forever, Batmobile, looked like the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Yeah. So that is probably tied for second with a couple other ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I think a lot of it came from the fact that I felt like, man, I could have won that thing and I could have been driving it. So right. it just like stuck with me. Yeah. That one, I think more than any of them that I've seen looks for better or for worse, like a hot wheel car. Like yeah. it is the most aggressive, sporty, uh, unashamedly boyish, uh, just like, how do we make all 10 year old boys jaw drop to the ground and just declare that they will drive that car when they turn 16 and they got, it got me (laughs) right. Like there was no cooler car when I was that age. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I get it on that one. That one has like this cool, like, uh, like ribbed exoskeleton yeah. on the side of it. You can like see all the inner workings of the car. And then of course the iconic like bat wing yeah. uh, fin over the, the top of it. Thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one's super cool. Um, I I had a feeling you were going to pick the classic uh, 89 Batman Returns. Um, that's yeah. a good one. That one's up there for me too. I can't decide if it's also because I like... I'm sure everybody listening and you at this point is starting to find that I'll like something just by its association with somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, my, for instance, my like for the movie Suicide Squad just because Will Smith and Margot Robbie are in it. But I, I've, I've always loved Tim Burton. Yeah, and I think just the knowledge that that was his go at the Batmobile. Even if he, I don't know if he was actually the one that was in the room sketching up and giving creative direction on it. It probably wasn't. <clears throat> um. It's just cool. It fits into the yeah. vibe of the Tim Burton Batman. And I want I want to see Tim Burton make other superhero films. Like Yeah, I'd watch them. Like what does Tim Burton Captain America feel like? <laughs> you know, like probably pretty crazy. Yeah. I'd be here for that. Yeah. Um yeah, that's awesome. Um I am very curious what our listeners favorite yeah. Batmobile is. Like that's such a, there's so many good ones. Um, another one I thought of that I don't even think we mentioned, they have, did you ever watch the, uh, Batman animated series, Batman Beyond? I may have saw, seen it like a couple episodes, but I didn't spend much, a lot of time watching it. It's, um, it's more like a flying car, I think more than okay. anything. Like he's, he, I don't even know if. The picture I'm looking at now, it doesn't even have at least visible wheels. Okay. Um, more like a hovercraft, I think, than anything. But it looks really cool. It's very minimalist in design. It's I'll throw that up there as well. But that was another one that I thought I was like, oh, maybe some people will like the just the overall animated vibe in general. And mm-hmm. if they don't like the OG, they'll just go with the Batman Beyond. But yeah, hit yeah. us up on Twitter, at Two Man Comic Book. Like, let us know what your favorite Batmobile is, because we're genuinely curious. Maybe we'll do a poll. Yeah, and uh, you know it'd be cool. We should do like a, like a playoff, like create a bracket, put all the Batmobiles in a certain thing, and just make them go head to head against each other, and uh, vote and have an actual winner. Yeah, yeah, like the best Batmobile by popular demand. Because I think Um, as long as we have at least eight of them, well, eight or sixteen or thirty-two, I bet (laughs) we can get eight of them. Because yeah. we've named five or six of them already. There, I'm Maybe looking at a list that has ten of them. So Okay. So, so we may have to eliminate We can do a play-in. Or come up with some more. Yeah. For sure. So um, do you have anything else on the Batmobile stuff before we take well, a quick I break? Mean, I don't have a ton to talk about the other ones, but I just if we're talking about the Batmobile, part of the coolness of Batman is the fact that he also has the planes and the boats and the motorcycles right. and everything and they've gone through so many different versions that you can't really pick them like in my mind as i think about it now i'm thinking of the batman forever series because he mm-hmm. had all of them yeah that was an and iconic saw, scene yeah uh, like, when they're, all... they're coming in a, on the riddler and stuff and you know you're flying and you're in the bat boat that kind of turned into a submarine or mm-hmm. something i don't remember if that's right but yeah like did they did they make some like wink or am I just making this up in my mind? Like at a, like by land, air, or sea, or something like that. Like I, a reference to that. I can't I remember. Don't remember that actually during that. Maybe I'm just 
fantasizing that happened in my head. But yeah, I remember thinking like, I've got to have a matching boat, aircraft, and yeah. car mm-hmm. when I become an adult. That all look the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is ridiculous, but it was so awesome at the time. How could you not love it? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, not all superheroes can fly or move faster than sound or light or have super speed. So you got to move around in style. And I got to say, Batman, he's figured that out. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> Wholeheartedly. So do you want to take a few before I take a few? Yeah. Let's take a... Wait a minute. Are we taking a quick break? I mean, sorry. Do you want to mention... You want to talk about a few? <laughs> well, and then pass are, it back you, to me. are you going back to Batman? No, I'm done with Batman. Okay. Well, I... Yeah, I'll take over a couple. Um... So I couldn't help, like, as soon as Drew mentioned doing this episode and what made us want to, like, span out and do a few other things is just I thought about Iron Man immediately as he is, I think in most people's eyes, like the equivalent Marvel, DC, Batman, Iron Man, yeah. kind of the rich playboy, philanthropist, billionaire guy. Um, mm-hmm. So there was some, like, quirky stuff over the years, and I found so much. I had to, like... Like, really narrow down all the stuff I was putting on there. So I kind of have this list curated up here. He's had... He's had so many different Iron Man suits. Like, like I know the MCU plays up, you know, that there have been a ton of them. And it does a pretty good job. But it, I think rightfully so, it didn't, like, try to bring up any of the quirky, weird ones that did not age as well. So, like, yeah. some of them... Let's see. I'm going to go through this list. I picked kind of marked a couple of them that I think... I'll save the the more weird, quirky ones for a little bit. But one that I thought was especially cool is that there was at one point a comic run, and I've read part of this. It's an older comic. I think it's Iron Man Volume 1, number 150 or something like that. And um, Iron Man had to go chase down Doctor Doom through time. So he actually built an Iron Man suit that could time travel, which is like really awesome. You know, not super quirky, mm-hmm. but it was like its only function, I think, was it was able to time travel. It was taking so much power that it, he couldn't like use it for anything else. Um, another really cool one, and these actually fall into the to the transportation one that I was talking about. There's actually, and I'll throw this on the screen right now, a Vespa Transformer uh, Iron Man suit. So he's like... I think this was relatively recently, like Iron Man and the Wasp or something like that. They they're like riding around in this Vespa scooter, like around somewhere, and it obviously looks like in the same color palette as one of his suits. And then Duty calls, and he has to <laughs> kick her off and pushes a button, and it turns into this suit that's really cool because it's not just like a Vespa that turns into the iconic Iron Man suit that looks like every other. It like has visual cues from a Vespa. In the Iron Man suit as well. So I thought that one was really cool. Um, I would totally ride a moped that turned into an Iron Man suit that I could put on. In the same breath, he has also had one that was a car that turned into an Iron Man suit. And what's really crazy about this one is like it was huge, like almost like Hulkbuster size when it was on it because it didn't like compress into like this form fitting sleek thing like we see in the MCU. It's it's very much Hulkbuster-esque. I'll show that one on the panel right now, too. But he's just driving, and he kind of, like, looks down. Well, I say he's driving. The car is flying whenever he's in it, because of course mm-hmm. it is. So he's, like, flying, mm-hmm. driving. He's in his Tom Force suit and his Ray-Bans, and he's got it on. And he looks down and kind of smirks, and he pushes this button. And it just, like, engulfs and, you know, how the sweet uh, animations happen in the movies. And it just completely wraps around his body, and he starts flying mm-hmm. instead of, well... Mm-hmm. He starts flying his suit instead of his car, which I think I would probably do the same thing. Um, and just while we're on the transportation, this is the one that I wanted to be sure to mention. This is so many people go, are you kidding me? Whenever I tell them this, because it's so ridiculous and silly, but hilarious. And it just kind of tells you like where the heads of the riders were at the time when Iron Man was like a newer character. So there were, <laughs> there was a time where he like, he wasn't flying around his his suit had roller skates built into it like like roller skates the four four wheels one two three four not roller blades like an inline and they were like rocket propelled like they had little boosters on them and he could 
He could roller skate around, and uh, I've got a quote here, on land, the jet skates could travel at 200 miles an hour. So don't you imagine (laughs) being in roller skates going 200 miles an hour? It's truly, truly hilarious. Um, I'm going to throw that on there as well. There's the image that I have. Maybe I'll find a couple more, but it looks funny. It kind of takes out any of the the menacing, not menacing, but the cool factor, like I'm big, tough Iron Man when he's roller skating around. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, those are a couple of the fun ones that that I found. Um, I have a few more I might mention if we have time later, but they're definitely not as important that I I thought those ones in spe- or specifically were some of the cool ones that Iron Man yeah. is used to get around. What about you? Uh, I don't really know <laughs> much about Iron Man beyond that. Well, I mean, you said you, said you had a couple to mention oh, okay. otherwise. We're just... If you haven't figured out yet, we're not necessarily sticking to one character the whole time, but um, just some of the quirky stuff that we've seen in comics. Um, yeah, I've got a few I'd like to mention, but mm-hmm. I think our cameras are about to shut off. So ah, let's take probably a need quick to take break. A, a quick break, and when we come back, I'll jump to some other interesting DC transportation <laughs> devices that <laughs> are definitely worth mentioning. Sweet, we'll be right back. And we're going to jump back in to some uh, not near as in-depth of of discussions Mm -hmm. as we did with Batman, but there's a few more DC ones that I think are worth mentioning. Um, First off, I'm just going to say this one just to say it and also declare the fact that I don't actually know all that much about it other than the fact that it exists and everybody knows it exists and I think everybody equally thinks it's strange. But yeah, there was a time like... Different incarnations of Wonder Woman have been able to fly and not. And yes, at one point she did have an invisible jet. So <laughs> I don't get that. But yeah, it, it was one I of guess, those things. You know, if I feel like it's important to mention because maybe some people don't realize that. Um, you yeah. know, it was always <laughs> quirky to me. Like somebody thought that, but then like. You ever seen like the invisible and the invisible jet like drawn in comics? I haven't actually. It's very unique. It's kind of like a. It almost looks like. Like, where you see like paper that's perforated, like where you have to tear it off to like, oh, okay, remove okay. a check or something. They like the way that they used to draw the invisible girl. And stuff. Right. Yeah. It's very yeah. similar to that. Um, invisible woman, which yeah, looks hilarious woman. whenever they're like when she's sitting there driving or piloting yeah. the plane. Um. It's just hilarious. I don't know. Yeah, it didn't age well. <laughs> and they made a they made a little reference to it in the Wonder Woman eighty four trailer. I remember where she just made a comment that she had a jet, and I was just like, "All right, right, I want to see this jet." You know, yeah, I want to see gonna the hard. invisible jet portrayed in a serious way on the big screen. Okay, I think they could do that if they do it the same way that the Shield helicarriers go invisible, like with like reflective yeah. panels. I would yeah. I would allow that. But it's just going to be, if we just see Gal Gadot <laughs> flying through the air, <laughs> that would be hilarious. I mean, maybe if they just really lean into some comedic relief, that was, would be acceptable. Wasn't, didn't they make a joke about that on Family Guy? Yes. Yes, they did. Wonder Woman, she was like, no, I'm actually in the in the bathroom of the invisible jet. And yeah. then she stands up, walks forward. She was like, no, I'm in the cockpit. Right. Like <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's, it's interesting. It makes me wonder... Why didn't you just make her fly from the beginning? There were probably all kinds of reasons. Right. But anyway, yes. I mean, I'm sure plenty of that. people thought that an invisible jet, that I mean, whenever that came out, was probably a very creative, inventive <laughs> yeah. idea, you know, but didn't so age as well as few, some other things. Yeah, that's fine. I've got a few more uh, that I just want to mention. So this next one, I remember whenever I went back to re or try to read uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, which I still haven't bothered to finish. I think it was when I was reading some of the lead up to that, I, re- I learned about Wave Rider, and I was just like, where have I heard that? Oh, yeah, duh. It, I mean, that's the name of the spaceship, time ship, on uh, the Legends of Tomorrow TV show. And I think at one point, Wave Rider was even like a character, ah. um, and they had a time sphere type thing, but uh, as a tip of the hat to it or whatever, yeah, they've got this pretty sweet spaceship that also travels through time in the Arrowverse um, 
And so I just wanted to mention that because, you know, you know me, if you've been with us from the beginning, you know that time travel is one of my hobbies. And I, anytime I can deal with time travel, even though in Legends of Tomorrow, it's pretty campy, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but I still dig it because they go into paradoxes and stuff like that. Yeah, I need to so, watch yeah, that. I mean, at least, you know, somebody's got a, a wicked spaceship, which kind of segues to another one. Um, another means of conveyance, which I think Alex might know more about than I do, is like the jet packs. We kind of mentioned it in Naomi, the Ren, or her, how Naomi's adopted father was one of the, uh, whatever you call it, warriors. Uh, the warriors from Ren. Guys, I don't know. Uh, and he had a jet pack. Yeah. You know? And I think Adam Strange might mm -hmm. use a jet pack to move around. And I just think that is a pretty awesome thing if i can't have the ability to fly myself right i think i would prefer to have a jetpack that doesn't burn me or whatever to fly around because just to feel the wind in your hair so that's a a jetpack is definitely if you can figure out the whole fueling right you know i've only i've only read two adam strange comics um but just in the time that i've read like and got a feeling for uh, just how they tell the story. Like you kind of have to put yourself in like a different era of comic book reading. Like the best way Is I can. like Flash Gordon type stuff? A little bit. Kinda, like you know, in the... my mind, it's like they, a modern version of old, like a golden era comic book writing, if that makes sense okay. at all. Um, still very cool. But like when I first started reading it, I was reading a few pages in and I stopped and like mentally reset. I was like, okay, this is not, like, a, I mean, it's a, obviously a very modern comic book. It's brand new, but it's being told in a different style. So I like literally started over and I found myself enjoying it even more. Um, cool. But yeah, the the booster packs with the, you know, the blaster gun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think some people like just it wouldn't work with them. Like they just can't put mm -hmm. their mind there, I guess. But it, it worked. It was cool. Like, um, that and I still am not too. caught up. Like I said, I only read the first two issues, but I'm like in now. Like I want to keep going. Cool. So I'm going to mention just a few more. Um, one mm -hmm. of them um, <laughs> that I just, I don't know. I feel like I saw it in the comics, but like I said, if you've, if you've spent time with us before, listened to anything in the past, you've, you may have heard me talk about Doom Patrol, uh, the DC Universe original series. And <laughs> they ride around. I mean, you've got a big robot, a guy who can fly, you know, well, he has... There's an energy being inside him that can fly. Um, uh, plastic, plastic girl or plastic. Yeah, that's what I think that's what. Uh, Elastic girl. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm mixing things. Plastic man is not related. Um, and in, anyway, you just have all these people and they travel around in one of the short school buses. Right. I mean, they painted it black, so it looks really <laughs> cool. But yeah, like you think there's this group of superheroes and they're, they're misfits if there have ever been any for yeah. sure. They're not, they're not in a fancy, I mean, they have a mansion that's their home base. So, you know, it makes me think that if Niles Calder wanted, he could have found them a little bit more sleek thing to move around in. Right. But it fits the group better to me just to think they pull up and you know, the robot <laughs> has to pull the, the, the passenger lever thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just get off and hear the just single file and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. It works though. So like just, you're right. It's just the overall aesthetic of those, yeah. of that team. I, I figure in my opinion, it's a lot like Iron Man in yeah. a lot of ways, you know, maybe the Hulkbuster type thing. But one of the reasons I wanted to mention is because for whatever reason I happen to <laughs> own yes. a Kryptonian battle suit with a little, Superman in his black outfit, you know, the allowing him to absorb a multitude of UV rays to recharge him. But wait, so yeah, is that yeah. is that a wink to what they were trying to do and probably will do in the Snyder cut? Like having him like it was rumored he was gonna be in the black. Yeah, whenever <clears throat> I mean, because I I feel like I saw him in the black. Didn't in like we? a trailer, I think. Or something and like I that. Yeah, because that was after he died. Yeah, right? you know. I think we're gonna see that in the Snyder cut. Okay, so that makes even more sense. Um, I did not expect that to look like it did just now. What you showed me. Yeah, it's uh, 
Now, I don't know how accurate that is to comic books because mm-hmm. I haven't looked at them in a while, but I saw it and I had to buy it because I was a kid and I was all about me some Superman. That's and, awesome. But, you know, he, he uses it and it made him to where he could actually be functional in a battle because just because Superman happened to be down and, you know, didn't have all the power, he still had the same drive and the same uh, determination to want to make things better. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know how often it comes up or what, but, yeah, I don't think we can mention the DC uh, superhero vehicles right. without mentioning the Kryptonian battlesuit at least a little bit. Yeah, I I didn't know anything about it, so I'm glad you did. You brought it up. And, like, you know, there's plenty of others. Like, Lex has his own suit right. at some points, and, you know, we've had we've got other all kinds of other things. Blue Beetle had his own little ship type thing and if you're thinking about the watchmen being involved they've got Mm -hmm. they've got stuff too but i just wanted to kind of really go into uh, the batman stuff and mention superman because i wanted to show everybody (laughs) that i still have a toy (laughs) for sure well that's all i had i mean we could we could go way longer than we've already gone just thinking of all the different vehicles and suits and tech that heroes Mm -hmm. have had over the years well, let me just spur the moment, put it, to, put it to you like this. So I asked you, what's your favorite Batmobile? So of the things we discussed mm-hmm. today, if you could walk out and have one of them sitting in your driveway or whatever, you know, mm. which if you could have, okay, so we c- talked about all the Batmobiles and all of his, uh, the Bat ecosystem <laughs> of uh, vehicles. Right. We, the Kryptonian battle suit, Wonder Woman's invisible plane, the Doom Patrol school bus, <laughs> uh, the Wave Rider time, you know, time spaceship, mm-hmm. uh, jetpack. Is all the uh, Iron Man stuff on this list? Yeah. And the oh. Iron Man stuff that you talked about. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think just because of the quirkiness and the more I thought about it after looking at this list, mm, I got to go with the, uh, yeah. the Vespa scooter armor. <laughs> I forgot about it. Um, I thought you were going to say the roller skates. <laughs> no. Going 200 <laughs> miles an hour on a roller skates, that nobody yeah. needs to see me do that. Uh, but I would mm-hmm. definitely ride a Vespa scooter that if I pushed a button and turned an Iron Man's armor around me, I'd yeah. be all for that. That's pretty yeah. sweet. What about you? Um, Picking I mean, from everything. That's tough. Yeah. I would I ride away I'm... in my Vespa scooter looking over my shoulder wondering if I made the right decision. <laughs> I mean, just call me Mr. Contingency. Um, my Because of what I had to say, I feel like I would choose, not that I have room for it in my driveway. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't fit. But I mean, if I pick it, if I pick the, the Wave Rider that they use in uh, Legends of Tomorrow, it mm-hmm. cloaks. So maybe ah. it's just hanging out above my house. Yeah. That way I can travel in space and time. That'd be pretty right. sweet. Yeah, but I, would, I don't uh, feel like that's as as useful as like I mean obviously it's very useful because it gives me power over time, right? Which I would <laughs> utilize pretty useful, yeah, for for good, right? Yeah, I would not utilize it for use it for evil. Um, but I don't know. I think also I'd really like a jetpack. Oh yeah, just yeah. a jetpack and a laser blaster. I mean, if I yeah, had like, Iron, uh, just any Iron Man suit, uh-huh. I think I would feel a lot safer and basically it would be the same thing. But there's something about being the rocketeer, you know, that type yeah. of guy. You've got your jetpack and some sort of helmet on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So if I'm picking purely for the, the thrill of flying, feeling the wind in my hair. And, and blasting. <laughs> how awesome it would be to be like, hey, Alex, are we recording today? All right. I'll be there in a few minutes and just yeah. put on my jetpack and zoom. Right. That'd be great, you know. Yeah. So it would be one of those two. Maybe we could both go in on the Wave Rider and then it has room for my Vespa and your jetpack on it. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. when it we go back in time. So much room. You know, yeah. we can get around, not on yeah. foot. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, um, go ahead and toss those uh, roller skates in too. <laughs> So that yeah. we can both look super fly as we're right. uh, riding around uh, 
Santa Barbara or whatever. You know, if it, if we're in a time machine and we go back to the 50s or 60s, suddenly 200 miles an hour on some roller skates doesn't look so bad. Yeah. Well, we're going to be the, the hottest thing since I'm just thinking, ketchup. Yeah, I mean, if you had... Let's go ahead and toss the new Batmobile yeah. in the hangar as mm-hmm. well because I think you could drive that around and almost blend in like... Oh yeah, it's just a Burning Man car. That's all. It's, <laughs> right. it's it's an art car. It's nothing special. Right. Um, but yeah, like if I I can't always use a jetpack. Well, I mean, I you just... can sit behind me on the Vespa. <laughs> just put right. hands wrapped around us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's a. And date. then all of a sudden we're in the middle of the desert somewhere, or maybe <laughs> on 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 a boardwalk of a beach. Yeah. And then you know your girl Friday calls, and you have to be like, well. Sorry, I got to zip out, and I'm just right. standing there, wishing that I was wearing the the rollerblades, right? The roller skates. Well, you can wear your jetpack on the back of it just in case. Uh, the advantage when it was in the comics, he was with the wasp, so she just kind of came with him and flew uh, yeah. herself. So, zip it away. cool. Well, do you have anything else before we wrap it up here? No, I think that's that's all. We, uh, I like I said, and like Alex said, this was far from extensive and. If we wanted to actually talk and give everybody equal time and energy, this would take us a different podcast. <laughs> yeah. So um, we just wanted to kind of talk about the Batmobiles, ask a few questions and talk about Iron Man and show off my toy. Yeah, for sure. Just a fun, quick one to throw up here for you guys. Yeah. Cool. Drew, where can they find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at Drew Morris Comp, C-O-M-P, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Drew Morris Composer. Or my website, DrewMorrisMusic.com. What about you, Alex? Awesome. You can find me on all social media accounts at Alex Wayne Miller. Wayne is W-A-Y-N-E, just like Bruce Wayne and all of my amazing whips that I get Mm -hmm. around town in. (laughs) Cool. And just once again, you can find us on social media for our two-man accounts on Twitter at Two Man Comic Book and everywhere else at Two Man Comic Book Club. And don't forget we, yes, the number two for both of those, numeral two. Don't forget we have a YouTube channel now, which you know if you're watching that or this video right now, but if you haven't checked it out yet, we're only three episodes in. Um, And if you are watching this on YouTube, we have a podcast. Yes. And uh, we are, Amazon Prime Music just launched a podcast service, and I got the email notifying us of that and we are available there so ah, cool that's a new service i don't know if there's going to be a place to review there or anything but it'd be great if you jumped onto apple podcasts and left us a rating and a review if you give us a five star rating and review we will read it here on the air yep. and tell a friend we would uh they like hey you like comic books or do you want to like comic books Mm-hmm. Well, have I got the podcast for you? Or don't even start there. If they're like super push off from comic books, be like, hey, do you like the Marvel movies or did you like Wonder Woman? Just grab them in. They're going to like it. It's all the yeah. same stuff. It all plays with the same source material. So that's all I've got. Uh, if you got any closing thoughts, are you ready to go? No. Um, I'll, I'm going to go grab my jetpack and I'll meet you in about five. Yeah, I'll grab my Vespa van. We'll see you guys later. See ya.